Tila, thank you so much for taking some time to sit down with me today and to speak to the histiocytosis and the AVP deficiency uh, community um, for central diabetes insipidus. I was really thrilled to meet you about a year ago as we started partnering more together and you've been um, very instrumental in facilitating a lot of work for um, pituitary disease and um, especially AVP deficiency um, for central diabetes and other similar conditions. I know you were part of the uh, survey that was conducted earlier this year to help with the name change of diabetes insipidus to AVP deficiency. And I understand that there's some additional surveys and other work going on. So we're very grateful to you and everything that you're doing. Um, and the purpose of us sitting down today, too, is related to a recent publication that you had in the New England Journal of Medicine, um, arginine or hypertonic saline stimulated co copetin and to diagnose AVP deficiency. And you were going to share a little bit more about your work and your findings um, so that the community can learn as they read along with the publication as well. Um, so thank you again, and I'm excited to, to learn alongside everyone else. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for me and also for my research group for this kind introduction and also for um, inviting us to present um, our new data. Um, we are focused on more or less uh, water, dip, water um, disturbances, especially um, AVP deficiency or formerly known as central diabetes insipidus. And we conducted a lot of studies over the past 10, 15 years in regard of diagnostic studies, and um, especially the new copeptin-based studies are developed um, here in Switzerland together with other colleagues. And this um, is our latest study, which was conducted in um, seven um, international centers. And um, to myself, I'm a clinical scientist working here in Switzerland in internal medicine and endo also endocrinology. And my research focuses especially vasopressin deficiency and also oxytocin deficiency. So I think I will just start with uh, uh, my presentation. Um, below you can see um, our research uh, members. Um, the group is led by Professor Miriam Chris Crane. Um, who is very well known in this area, particularly vasopressin deficiency, and um, also Julie Repat and Bettina Winzeller. So vasopressin deficiency or arginine vasopressin deficiency, which is also known as central diabetes insipidus, belongs to the so-called polyuria polydipsia syndrome. And um, it is characterized by disruptions to the hypothalamic posterior pituitary axis, which leads to a deficient release of arginine vasopressin, and therefore polyuria, and this is compensated by polydipsia. So patients losing a lot of urine, and they compensate it by um, a lot of fluid intake. And the main differential diagnosis of arginine vasopressin deficiency is arginine vasopressin resistance, or also known as nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. There is an impairment in the kidneys, not in the pituitary. And these patients are also unable to concentrate their urine. And the third disease is primary polydipsia. This is a condition characterized by excessive fluid intake and then secondary suppressed levels of arginine vasopressin, um, which then lead to polyuria. And the main challenge is to differentiate between arginine vasopressin deficiency and also primary polydipsia, because the clinical symptoms are usually the same, and also lab findings are more or less identical. So in these cases, we usually need dynamic testing. And classically, um, I think a lot of patients experienced uh, this, is, it's, it's a water deprivation test. The idea with a water deprivation test is that um, we assess the ability to concentrate urine um, by applying the water deprivation of at least 16 hours. And if you are able to concentrate your urine, then you have rather mild primary polydipsia. But if you are not able, after 16 hours of water deprivation, to concentrate your urine, you, are most, you have most likely um, either vasopressin deficiency or vasopressin resistance. However, um, the water deprivation test is a very old test and it was never validated, the, the protocol. So um, the diagnostic accuracy is very poor. And we tested it 
a few years ago, and we um, came to that very, very concerning numbers of uh, a diagnostic accuracy of 76%, meaning that one in three patients is wrongly diagnosed with a water deprivation test. So what we then did is we assessed new stimulation tests. So the idea is to stimulate vasopressin release. And if you can release vasopressin, then you, are, you don't have vasopressin deficiency. But if you can't release after a stimulation, then the diagnosis of vasopressin deficiency can be given. And we can stimulate vasopressin, for example, by, apply, by, by increasing the plasma osmolality, for example, hypotonic saline, or by applying arginine. Um, arginine stimulation test is a very well-known stimulation test for the anterior pituitary, and we demonstrated that it also can stimulate the posterior pituitary. In one of our, well, one of the main problems with assessing is, uh, the vasopressinergic system is that vasopressin or arginine vasopressin is difficult to measure. And what we usually do is we measure copeptin, which is a part of the precursor peptide and release together with vasopressin, but it's very easy to measure. So a few years ago, we started with the hypotonic saline test. The idea is that we apply hypotonic saline, targeting a sodium level of at least 147. Uh, and, um, to, and then after that, if you re reach the target sodium level, we uh, sampled one plasma um, sample for copeptin. And what we could demonstrate is that in patients with primary polydipsia, we can stimulate copeptin. So copeptin and vasopressin really, uh, can be released and increases in our blood. But in diabetes insipidus or uh, vasopressin deficiency, the levels remain unchanged, flat. And this test demonstrated a diagnostic accuracy of 96.5%. So very high, and it's a very good test. You can more or less diagnose all patients um, with a suspected arginine vasopressin deficiency. However, you need close monitoring and it may cause discomfort to the patients. So what we then did is we um, searched for new stimulation tests and we tested the arginine uh, stimulation. And it's a very simple test. So what you do is you apply an infusion with arginine, which is a protein. And after 60 minutes, you sample one um, blood sample for copeptin. And again, what we could demonstrate is that in patients with primary polydipsia, it increases. So they don't have a deficiency. But in those with um, diabetes insipidus or vasopressin deficiency, the levels remain unchanged. And this test also demonstrated a very good diagnostic accuracy of 93%. So a little bit lower than the hypotonic saline, but still very high. And now in this third study, we aimed to um, compare both tests in a head-to-head -head study. That means that patients with suspected arginine vasopressin deficiency were included, and we applied both tests in a randomized order, meaning that um, all patients re um, received the hypotonic saline and the arginine test. And after three months of follow-up, the final diagnosis was made based on the hypotonic saline test and also the response to the treatment, MRI and everything what we had until then. And we published um, our data in the New England Journal of Medicine just a month ago and included in total over 150 patients, um, almost 70 patients with arginine vasopressin deficiency, and almost 90 patients with primary polydipsia. And what I, what I just want to demonstrate to you is, again, that clinical symptoms at the time of diagnosis were more or less the same between both groups, and also the lab results were more or less the same. So this demonstrates that we really need stimulation tests, dynamic testing. So this slide demonstrates you the main results, the copeptin after hypotonic saline or arginine stimulation in both patient groups. So in patients with arginine vasopressin deficiency in orange and in those with primary polydipsia in blue. 
While we could demonstrate that the hypotonic saline test had again an excellent diagnostic accuracy of 95%, unfortunately, we could also demonstrate that the arginine stimulation test is not as good as the hypotonic saline test and only has a diagnostic accuracy in direct comparison of 74%, meaning that um, arginine vasopressin deficiency was more accurately diagnosed with the hypotonic saline test but not with the arginine stimulation test. However, we then looked into the arginine stimulation test in more detail. And what we did is we um, reassessed the cutoffs for copeptin and could demonstrate that by using a copeptin cutoff of 5.2, we could diagnose primary polydipsia with over 90% um, specificity. And by using a copeptin cutoff of 3.0 or less, we could diagnose um, arginine vasopressin deficiency with over 90% specificity. So the arginine stimulation test can still be used uh, in the diagnosis of um, arginine vasopressin deficiency or primary polydipsia with these two cutoffs. If patients have a copeptin level in between these cutoffs, in these cases, we should perform the hypotonic saline test. Um, the test was very well tolerated. Um, we can clearly see that there is a test preference for the arginine stimulation over the hypotonic saline stimulation because it's a very short test, usually with no major side effects. So um, to conclude, arginine vasopressin deficiency was more accurately diagnosed with hypotonic saline stimulated copeptin than the arginine stimulation test. However, by using two new cutoffs, we can still apply the arginine stimulation test because it's a very safe test and very short test and can be also applied in, in children. So this study only focused on adults with um, suspected arginine vasopressin deficiency, but arginine uh, stimulation test is also established in children. This final slide, I want to thank you for your attention, also thank all collaborators and also my research group, especially my boss and mentor, Miriam Chris Cray. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I mean, what a fantastic study and great findings. And so um, it's it's safe to, to say as well that the study also showed that the um, old water deprivation test that had been used, um, that there's better options out there, both of which seem like they are less uh, stressful on the individual because I imagine when you have, um, you know, this this uh, condition being deprived of water for 16 hours is very hard. Um, I know that's a very strong desire for thirst, and so um, it sounds like either of these options are fantastic and an improvement on what currently existed. Definitely, yeah. In in some cases, a water deprivation test can be used. But these cases are usually very severe cases of arginine vasopressin deficiency. And in these cases, usually you diagnose based uh, or can diagnose with a water deprivation of a few hours, but very few cases. And otherwise, I mean, it is a very painful, it is very painful not only for the patients, but also for us to, to, to have these patients and um, for 16 hours they are water deprivated. So um, I would definitely recommend if it is possible to sample, co sample and measure copeptin, um, we should apply at least for arginine stimulation test. And the more experienced hospitals um, can also perform the hypotonic saline test. Yes, and this is a safe test. We performed uh, the hypotonic saline test up to now, maybe 400 times or 300, 300 times, I would say. So it is a very safe test. Okay. That's great to know. And um, since we're talking to um, families worldwide, what's the availability of these diagnostic tests? It sounds like some experience might be needed, but that most institutions can perform them. So the problem is um, the copeptin measurement because copeptin is a new biomarker and it can be measured very simple and there is no problem. You can also ship it from your hospital to another hospital which can measure it, but still not all hospitals um, uh, have the ability to measure copeptin and if you have an hospital a larger one maybe who is performing such tests you should definitely um, prefer the arginine or the hypotonic saline test 
if not, if you are only able to perform the test but not measure, you can still ship the samples to another hospital. It's very stable. And um, you you have, so in, in Switzerland at least, and also in other um, countries, you have the test results at the same day in a few hours. So um, you have the diagnosis within a few hours. This is a new bi biomarker, and we need um, to encourage a lot of endocrinologists worldwide to uh, use copeptin. And I think it will definitely enter uh, a lot of clinics. Fantastic. And um, it sounds like they can reach out to you if they have other questions to learn a little bit more about how to go about administering the tests. And um, I look forward to this. I know new when new biomarkers get introduced, uh, as we start to use them more, there's so much more we can learn too. So I really appreciate um, all of your, your work. And this is uh, phenomenal findings. And I, I'm excited to share this with the histiocytosis community as well, because 10% or, or so of um, uh, the arginine vasopressin deficiency patients are found to have histiocytosis. So um, there's a very big overlap here. And, and then the other 90% that don't have histiocytosis, I know it's going to be very, very beneficial um, for them as well. So thank you so much for spending some time to present this. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with uh, the patient community? Well, we will have a lot of new studies, which will um, be published in, a, in the next months and years. So we are still working to um, improve the diagnostic procedure and we develop new stimulation tests still. So we don't, do not stop <laughs> um, uh, just to, to, to ease uh, the whole process. And also one important point is that not all patients need um, the stimulation tests. And the problem is that we currently have no, let's say, scoring or um, cutoffs in the baseline levels where we can say these patients need a stimulation test and these patients do not need a stimulation test. And what we now did, and hopefully it will publish in a few months, is we, we developed also a score for patients with suspected arginine vasopressin deficiency in the baseline evaluation. So without any stimulation, without any testing, and this score will help us to, to, to select patients who need the stimulation test on those who do not need any further testing and can be diagnosed just based on a score. And we will publish hopefully in a few months. So we will update our procedure, diagnostic procedure in a few months again. Oh, that's fantastic. And I know this is such a, um, a passion for you, and we really appreciate you focusing on um, you know, these particular conditions as part of your work. Um, it's wonderful to see the dedication and the knowledge and advancements. And I know that you're really hoping to make the diagnostic process as well as the treatment so much easier for patients. So thank you for that. Thank you.